In this video, I'm going to talk about five of my biggest learning mistakes while I was starting out to learn Power BI. And hopefully by the end of this video, you would be a bit wiser as to not make the same mistakes. Let's start. Mistake number one, not learning Power Query soon enough. I remember I participated in a World Excel Championship back, I think in 2016 or 17. And that is where I was competing with a couple of other people around the world in solving a couple of Excel challenges. Things around Excel formulas, visualizations and things like that. I've also written a blog post on that. I'm going to leave a link so that you can check it out. How did I perform in that contest? But the point is that after a few rounds of Excel formulas and visualizations, which I was really good at, the competition started to throw questions around Power Pivot and Power Query. And that was the first time when I opened the Power Query window for the very first time in my life. And when I was looking at Power Query questions and I was taking a look at the Power Query window, for the first time in my life, not knowing what to do and where to click. Obviously, I was eliminated and I could not make it to the further rounds in the competition. But then after the competition got over, I was thinking to myself that if Microsoft is asking these questions at a global event level, they may have a plan to promote these products further. And that is when, when I started to spend time off my work, a couple of hours here and there to learn what these tools meant, uh, especially what Power Query is. And once I witnessed the power of Power Query, I was considering myself stupid enough why didn't I pick up Power Query soon enough? Power Query is literally like having gold under the rug and you're not exploiting its power when you have the tool pre-built into your Excel. If for some reason you do not know what Power Query is all about, I have done a lot of videos in Power Query and I have a beginner's course in Power Query and a very specialized, very advanced M course in Power Query. You should definitely take a look at that and you should not regret in a couple of years from now that why did you not learn Power Query soon enough? Mistake number two, ad hoc problem solving. Now, once I learned Power Query for about a month, month and a half, and then I proceeded on to writing DAX formulas using Excel Power Pivot. Soon enough, I was in the Power BI environment, writing DAX, doing some Power Query work and things like that. At the time when I was writing DAX, my problem solving approach was very, very ad hoc. So what I used to do was I used to get the data, uh, maybe if it requires some cleaning it up, I will do that in Power Query, and then I'm gonna push the data to Power BI. I would not think about what's a dimension table, what's a fact table, how am I going to build a relationship, what is going to be my DAX, what is going to be the granularity of the table, how my model is going to look like, what kind of relationships will I create. I just used to get the data in Power BI and I used to wrangle with the hardest possible DAX that I have written myself. If I go back and take a look at my own DAX from four years ago, I'm going to be completely haunted that how did I write that? And that's completely bizarre of solving such a simple problem. The point that I'm trying to make is that back in the day, I thought that writing complicated DAX is the only way to solve problems. Whereas I completely ignored the part of data modeling. You can very, very cleverly model the data, connect the tables to one another and come up with very simple solutions to the hardest possible problems in DAX. And my approach to problem solving was ad hoc. What I would recommend to you is that when you start creating Power BI models, and if you're new to Power BI, I would suggest that you spend a lot of time planning your models. What tables do you have? At what granularity do you have? What columns do you want to bring it? What calculations can be pre-processed and what calculations you want to perform in DAX? What kind of relationships do you want to build between the two tables and things like that? And then, and only then, you start to kind of do work in Power BI and start to write your DAX. That pre-planning and not going ad hoc on your models is going to save you so much time and effort not wrangling with complex DAX. Don't do any ad hoc problem solving, structure your models well, and please don't make that mistake. Mistake number three, not writing enough notes for my future self. Now, when you are developing a Power BI model, obviously you are currently looking at the model, you are really immersed in the problem, and you obviously understand every single piece of code or formula or logic or relationship that you're trying to build. 
But the problem is that once you're out of that, your mind tomorrow is not going to realize and recall that what was your thinking pattern back in the time when you were trying to solve the problem. And I have witnessed that so many number of times that I was trying to solve a difficult problem or something or the other, and I did get to the solution, but I made a you know kind of weird tweak in the solution to kind of account for something else. And I would not write any notes for my future self. Now, I would obviously deploy the model and the client used to come back and ask ask me a question about it, or I had to work on the model further, make some enhancement on the model, and I would just stare at my own work, having no clue as to what did I do it back in the day. Now, I am telling you out of my own personal experience that please do write notes for your future self. Your future self is not going to remember that six months ago on a Monday evening at 8 p.m., what was your mind thinking back then? Please don't make that mistake. Write some notes for yourself. Mistake number four, not asking for enough help. When I was trying to solve any particular problem and the problem was beneath my capacity to solve it, I still used to waste a lot of time reading, researching about the problem rather than just reaching out to the people and asking for help. Now, personally speaking, it gives me an immense pride to be able to solve the problem, find the nooks and corners, put jumbled pieces together to be able to make a working solution. It gives me a lot of pride, but I often think to myself, if I could just take a little bit of help from the people who have done that in the past, that is going to leapfrog my problem solving process and make me get to the answer way faster. My recommendation, please reach out to the experts and ask for help. Now there are two specific places that I will strongly recommend for people to go and ask for help. Number one is definitely Power BI community. There are a ton of great souls in the world that for no reason, they are just helping out people one question after the other question. You post a question and people are just going to jump in and start to answer your question. And you can pick and choose. I mean, you're going to get multiple answers to your question. You can pick and choose the answer that you like and have it implemented in your model. The other way of asking for help is that you can reach out to content creators and very specific industry leaders, and then you can ask them a question. In both the scenarios, whatever you happen to choose, either you ask the question on the community or you ask the question from a content leader, please spend some time to frame your question. Do not assume that the person on the other side has any understanding of what your data is, what your jargons are, what your lingos are, and please do not send snapshots of the questions. Please spend some time on creating a sample data set, describing the problem very, very clearly, and also providing an expected output as an answer. This is what you would like to get as an answer. If you just give help to get your question answered, I bet you that you're going to get your question solved in record time. Please do not make the mistake of not reaching out to people and asking for help. Mistake number five, and that's a big one. I did not give myself enough time to proofread my own work. And that is very, very, very important. Now, it's absolutely inevitable that when you're doing any kind of coding or development work, mistakes are going to happen and then you will overlook something or the other and things are going to go wrong in the model or in the calculation that you're trying to do. That is absolutely fine. The key to finding mistakes and rectifying them is to do bulletproof proofreading of your own model and finding out the mistakes with an eye for a detail. The problem with the proofreading is that if you are developing the model today and I'm engrossed in the model and I'm trying to write the code and I'm trying to kind of get to the solution to the problem and things like that, I am right now and in the moment wearing a developer's hat where I'm trying to execute a problem solving process within the model. With that particular hat, when I'm trying to solve the problem in the developer mode, I would not be able to audit my own work and I would leave the mistakes glaring at me unnoticed. What I will strongly recommend you to do is that you give yourself a bit of a time gap, maybe at least a couple of hours and switch the hat and wear a consumer's hat and then try to take a look at your own model. If you think about the end consumer, perhaps the CEO of the company or the CFO of the company, and then you try to take a look at your own work from their eyes as to what they are going to take a look at in the model, they're not really concerned about how sophisticated is your DAC, how beautiful are your charts. They're literally going to read the report as if they were to make a million dollar decision based on the numbers that you're trying to show them. Once you start to take a look at your own work, 
unbiased from the consumer's eyes, you're definitely going to find loads and loads of areas of improvements and perhaps even some calculations that are not showing up right. And then you can start to correct them. I will highly recommend that you continue to wear the consumer's hat and try to find as many errors and gaps in the model as possible and then go back and wear the developer's hat and then start to rectify it. If you commit to this process of wearing a developer's hat, giving it some time, maybe at least a few hours, maybe the next day, and then wearing the consumer's hat and trying to take a look at your own model, and you do that iteration for a couple of times, your models are definitely going to become error-free. In short, please don't make the mistake, do not check the model right away after you have finished developing it, give it some time. All right, these were my top five learning mistakes in Power BI. I still do make them once in a while, but I would highly recommend that you keep these things in mind and try to reduce the mistakes as much as you can so that your Power BI work is absolutely flawless. In case you have a mistake that you have learned from greatly in the past, I would highly recommend that please do share your experiences in the comments below and I'll be glad to read them. In the end, I'd like to give you a big shout out about my courses on Power BI tax, power query, M language, data modeling. In these courses, I try to teach you the problem solving process, give you the mindset of framing the problem in the right way, and then trying to approach the problem with a particular solution. You not only learn, obviously, the DAX and the M and the data modeling behind it, but you also learn how to structure and how to think about problems so that you can start to attack the problems of your own data very, very confidently. If you're interested, the link is down in the description below, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye now.